I encourage all of your listeners to watch this video documentary. And then when it is over, ask themselves if they believe they witnessed a crime happening and Jared Draper was the victim. And where we are now is, is that uh, it's, a, it's a horrible, horrible thing to watch. And uh, the only thing that has happened is uh, the civil case that we pursued was settled for a million dollars. And, and it doesn't seem to be an, uh, enough of a result for justice. You know, money is all that you can get in civil cases, but it's surely, you know, and, and again, I just ask your listeners, they, they should watch it. And then when it's over, ask themselves, are the individuals in that jail cell who are government employees, corrections officers, a nurse, ask themselves, did we just watch a horrible crime happen? And if they say yes, then the, then they need to understand that no one has been charged. And that's what we're, that's what this is all about. Um, you know, uh, I've been practicing all 37 years and we're a suburb of Louisville, Kentucky. My practice has been primarily criminal defense and not specifically and particularly uh, civil rights cases. But when this was brought to me uh, and, and we acquired this jail video, it just seemed like it, it, we needed to push this and go forward as hard as we could. And we did it in the civil setting, which is the only setting we had. And, and right now what we're looking at is, uh, uh, you know, as, as you know, the United States attorney in every state determines whether they believe a crime has occurred. So in, in, in Jared's situation, he, you know, Jared was a young man uh, that was stopped. His original stop was a simple traffic offense. He uh, failed to use his turn signal. Uh, the, a pursuit began and it was a slow speed chase. And finally, Jared gets stopped by multiple police officers in this rural community sheriff's department. And when they go to the vehicle, Jared has slit his wrists and they take him to the hospital from the hospital, he's cleared to go back to the jail. And when he gets to the jail, uh, they do the, the jail intake. The arresting officer, and you will see in, the, in the, the documentary, the arresting officer's deposition pieces, where the arresting officer confirms that he believed Jared had ingested drugs. The arresting officer believes he told them when he brought Jared in that he'd ingested drugs. We have a young man that is now taken into the jail who's ingested drugs. We believed that if we'd gone to that trial in the civil case, it would have been clear that that message was shared to the intake. And their response was, and, he, and he's also cut his wrist. They put him in a, a, a medical uh, suicide watch, single cell in a suicide smock. He has a behavior that they determine his behavior that is destructive of jail property. He's banging on a solid steel door. So they, the jail personnel determine in their mind that under their rules, because he's banging on the door, they get to take him and put him in an emergency restraint chair. So what you see is this full video. And we had all the hours of Jared being in, incarcerated. They take this young man, they put him in a steel chair they strap him down five point restraints across his body his arms are down his legs are down put a spit mask and a helmet on him and he sits there for two hours well during that two hours what's happening is is this methamphetamine that he has ingested is beginning to release into his body they take him out of the chair he tells the corrections officer chief the chief corrections officer who asks him questions I've, I've been drugging because he asks him. They do nothing. So you have a young man who is now sweating profusely, so much so you can see it on the video that we have in the videos in, above the cell. You can see him sweating profusely. He's drinking water, which is another a methamphetamine overdose sign, sweating profusely, intake of water. They do nothing. He then begins to spin around in the cell and he's bouncing off and hitting walls and falling down. His suicide smock is off. He is nude. He is clearly in mental 
in physical distress. And the response of the jail personnel is that they believe, and this is, this is out in the, in, in the, in the deposition, when we depose the chief corrections officer, his statement was that he believed at that point, Jared Draper was just a pissed off inmate trying to get attention by spinning around, falling down and bouncing off the walls, not a, a human being in distress. They were, their response to that was taking him again, putting him in this metal chair, strapping him down again, placing the spit mask and hood over him again. And then the second time in this ch the chair, he begins to have major physical reactions. He begins to bang his head. He begins to shake back and forth. But again, keeping in mind, he is totally and completely bound to the chair. And the nurse comes in with other corrections officers and his method of helping this suffering individual who is in clear distress, he takes a taser and he tases him. And that happens six more times. And then ultimately what you see happen is you see Jared die in a restraint chair, blood coming out of his mouth. You see through the spit mask and he died. So that was what was just so powerful to us. And that was what we pursued the civil case based upon violation of his federal civil rights.